Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we're diving into the Creality Otter Lite, a wireless focused 3D scanner designed for hobbyists, makers, and creators who want pro-level scanning without the pro-level price tag. Creality has taken the wildly successful Otter 3D scanner and reimagined it as a streamlined, mobile-first device. Whether you're capturing tiny resin miniatures or full-size cars, the Otter Lite promises detailed results in a truly mobile package. But does it live up to the hype? After a month of hands-on testing, I've got the answers. The good, the bad, and everything in between. So let's unbox it, scan with it, and see if it really earns a spot on your workbench. Before we begin, this Otter Light was provided for me to review by Creality. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this scanner for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, from scanners to accessories, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. The Otter Light comes in a nice hardbacked carrying case. It has a fabric exterior with a carrying handle at the top and two zippers securing it. Opening it up, we see mesh pouches holding the accessories in place. The main section has everything nicely bagged. First is the Creality Owl statue, which they include with all of their scanners. It has lots of detail to let you test out the scanner's capabilities. Next up is the Light Bridge. This handle is what turns the Otter Light into a wireless scanner. It contains a 3400 milliamp hour lithium battery, rechargeable via USB-C at the top. Creality claims the battery life will last 3 hours, and that seems about right with my testing. It lasted a lot longer than I was expecting. The handle has 20 watt fast charging, which Creality says will charge 80% in 1 hour. There is a 4 LED battery indicator at the bottom. The Otter Light screws onto the top of the handle, and then a magnetic clip securely holds your phone for wireless scanning. If you don't want to use the Otter Light wirelessly, then the included USB cables can be used to connect to your computer for scanning. The main cable has a USB 3.0 Type 8 connector for your computer, and a USB Type C connector with screws to attach to the scanner. If your computer's USB ports are underpowered, you can use the second included USB cable to supply additional power. Finally, we have the Otter Light scanner itself. This is a near-infrared binocular structured light scanner, which uses an infrared projector to project a pattern onto the surface of your objects. Four infrared sensors then detect how that pattern deforms over the surface extracting depth information from it. That four-lens stereo vision allows you to scan both small and large objects, which I'll dive deeper into in a bit. Near-infrared works great on a variety of surfaces, including black and metal objects without requiring scanning spray. Creality claims 0.05mm accuracy for the Otter Light, compared to the 0.02mm accuracy of the original Otter. That is still very accurate for a handheld scanner, which I'll test out in a bit. Also on the front are two white LEDs, and an RGB camera to capture color information. The Otter Light captured 24-bit color information, claiming true-to-life colors of the objects you are scanning. Around the edges are eight additional infrared LEDs, which will help illuminate marker dots when scanning with the markers. Creality even includes 10 sheets of both small and medium marker dots, 980 small and 500 medium dots in total, although most of the time you won't need to use markers, as the Otter Light is designed for easy-to-use markerless scanning. On the back we see physical buttons for starting and stopping a scan, and a plus and minus buttons for adjusting exposure settings. I prefer physical buttons over the capacitive buttons of the original Otter. The click of the buttons just gives you the feedback that you actually pushed it. Around the side we see the USB Type-C port with two screws to secure it, and on the bottom we see a quarter 20 hole for securing to a tripod or the light bridge and the six pads for connecting to the light bridge. So let's dive into the Otter Light's main feature, its wireless scanning capabilities. Screw on the Otter Light scanner onto the light bridge and press the power button. This will power the scanner and turn on a Wi-Fi 6 wireless network. You can then connect to it either from your phone or a computer, which will enable wireless scanning. The Creality Scan mobile app, available for iOS and Android, will turn the Otter Light into a truly wireless scanner. Slide the phone onto the included phone clip, and magnets will secure your phone onto the light bridge. It's a very strong connection. When connected to the scanner's Wi-Fi network, the Creality Scan app lets you scan and process those scans directly on your phone. The scanning experience greatly depends on what phone you have. Creality recommends 6 gigs of RAM and a processor of at least a Snapdragon 888 or an iPhone 13 with an A15 Bionic chip. I have a Pixel 7, which has 8 gigs of RAM and a Tensor G2 chip which is roughly equivalent to the Snapdragon 888, although apparently slower for floating point operations, which scanning almost certainly makes use of. When the Creality Scan app worked, it worked well. 
I could consistently scan smaller objects on the phone with 4 to 5 frames per second. However, medium or large size scans would often throw a real-time memory is exhausted error, even when I wasn't screen recording and after a fresh reboot. If you want to consistently scan medium or larger objects with your phone, you'll want a phone with more RAM. And when you complete a scan, you can either process the scan directly on your phone or send the scan to your computer for processing on more powerful hardware. The import from mobile feature did fail for me a couple of times, displaying a this folder is empty error. That seemed to be for scans where I ran out of memory and erred, so maybe it is only erred projects that didn't save correctly. Thankfully though, you don't need a phone for wireless scanning. You can also use your computer. And this is my favorite part of the Otter Lite. Connect your computer to the Wi-Fi Bridges Wi-Fi network and the Creality Scan app will seamlessly connect to the scanner. The wireless scanning experience with my laptop was great. It was a very smooth experience. I was getting an average of 15 frames per second scanning with the wireless Otter lights. I loved not being tethered by cables. It made moving the scanner around very easy. You can also combine the best of both worlds by using Creality Scan's mirror mode. This lets you use your phone to mirror the display of your laptop, showing the real-time scan data on your phone, but using your computer's processing power to actually perform the scan. It's interesting how Creality implemented this. You connect both your phone and the computer to the Lightbridge's Wi-Fi, and then in mirror mode, it spins up a server and gives you an IP address and a QR code that you scan on your phone. Your desktop then turns into a more streamlined mobile view, and the web page your phone loads just displays that view. The trick is to use a normal QR code scanner. While the Creality Scan mobile app does have a QR scan feature on the main page, it doesn't work for this. It would always error. I thought mirroring wasn't working at all, but it turns out that you just can't use the scanner in the app. You have to use a normal QR code reader instead. Strange. I like Creality Scan as a scanning software package. It allows you to manage your device, upgrading firmware, and calibrating the scanners. And while scanning, it has a number of features to make life easier. It can automatically ignore large flat areas, so the table that you are scanning on doesn't appear in the scan. If you move too fast, sometimes you can lose tracking. But no big deal. You can go back to any area you've already scanned, and within a couple of seconds, it'll recognize where you are looking at and resume scanning. Creality's anti-shaking algorithm helps with that smooth tracking. The scanner can only capture areas it sees, so to get a full scan of an object, you normally have to perform multiple scans. Scan one angle, stop, flip the object, and make another scan. And then in post-processing, you tell the software to combine the separate scans together. While you still can do that, I found that the resume tracking algorithm is so quick and effective that instead of separate scans, I just pause the scan, flip the object, and resume that same scan. The software almost always picked up right where it left off, and I didn't have to waste time combining separate scans together. I loved that. After a scan is complete, you need to post-process the raw scan data. Creality Scan's lasso tools make it easy to select points to remove, and delete them from the scan. And then the raw scan is turned into a point cloud, and then turned into a watertight mesh, and finally the color texture is added. You can tweak a number of settings in each of those steps, or you can click the one-click processing button to have Creality Scan do it all automatically. Depending on the complexity of the object you are scanning, I found post-processing took between 5 and 15 minutes on my mid-range laptop. Not super quick, but also not outrageously long. So with all of the specs out of the way, let's look at some actual scans. Almost all of these scans were done with the Otter Lite wirelessly connected to my laptop and post-processed using Creality Scan's one-click default settings. The included owl statue is a Creality staple. It's easy to scan and gives you a good sense of the detail that the Otter Lite can provide. It was able to capture the details of the feathers. Comparing to the original Otter, you can see that the mesh from the Otter Lite has just slightly less detail. This Vault Boy pop figure was easy to scan and also turned out pretty good. The Otter Lite handled the black eyes and shoes without issues. I didn't even have to manually adjust the exposure. The shoulders did connect to the bottom of the head though. The Otter Lite couldn't quite tell that they should be separate. The helmet of this Kerbal is tough because you can't see the backside of the head, so the software has to fill in the gaps. And Creality Scan did a good job at guessing at the missed areas at the back of the head. And the color texture is pretty good. So let's scan something a little smaller and more detailed. This crossbow fight scene is resin 3D printed and packed full of details. The Otter Light did an excellent job at capturing the scene, although it couldn't quite capture the fine details of the face but it surprisingly was able to capture the small pieces of the crossbow. This Veronoi Bulbasaur is a stress test for overlapping geometry. Since it is nothing but thin tubes, they are constantly obstructing each other. Some scanners really do not like this geometry. 
but for the Otter Light, it didn't even break a sweat. It easily scanned this object and rarely even lost tracking. And post-processing did an excellent job. Every tube was kept separate, with the only defect being the mesh around one of the eyes. This object was 3D printed, and while the original Otter could make out the individual layer lines, the Otter Lights doesn't quite show that level of detail. And speaking of stress tests, this 3D printed skull is a scanner's worst case scenario. Not only does it have hundreds of little tiny holes, but it's also 3D printed in a translucent jade green filament. Very few scanners I've tested could handle this model. And the Otter Light excelled in this test. I am impressed. It recognized all the little holes, even if it filled in a few of them around the back. And I could have done a better job of scanning the inside of the front face, as the mesh just closed that area off. But this tough scan was a great showing by the Otter Light. Moving up sizes, this tall dragon statue has some overlapping geometry, and the thin wings can sometimes throw off scanners. But again, the Otter Light had no issues with the scan. The object has some defects from when it was 3D printed, and the Otter Light was able to capture those defects, although they aren't quite as clean as the capture from the original Otter. This full-size Master Chief helmet has a very reflective front visor. Normally, you'd have to use a scanning spray to cover the reflective parts with a matte coating, but the Otter Light didn't need any scanning spray. It was able to scan the entire helmet, inside and out, and it came out great. This shiny gold lion statue also has reflective embellishments. Many scanners struggle with this part, and would require scanning spray to dull the reflective surfaces, but not the Otter Light. It handled it perfectly. The resulting mesh is superb, and the color of the texture really shows off the details that the Otter Light's RGB camera can capture. Black objects are also notoriously difficult for structured light scanners to capture, but the near-infrared light from the Otter Light makes it easy to scan black objects like this PlayStation controller. It captured every part of the controller, including the undersides of the thumbsticks, and the texture detail looks great. However, when looking at just the mesh, you can see that the mesh has a little bit more noise than we've seen so far. It's not a bad scan, there's just a slight surface ripple. That's in comparison to this white Stadia controller. It's just as easy to scan, and when we look at the resulting mesh, we can see much less noise compared to the black PlayStation controller. So while the Otter Light can handle black objects, it's clear it's having to work a little harder to capture it. This LEGO painting is a good use case for the texture scan mode. Sometimes an object doesn't have enough unique geometry to track motion. For this LEGO piece, geometry mode sees this round object and gets confused, spinning the scan around. But when using texture mode, it uses the color data to track motion, allowing you to scan flat or round objects without unique geometry. The Otter Light's near-infrared light is eye-safe, making it a great scanner for scanning people. The face scan mode is designed for just face scanning. It'll ignore hair. It did a pretty good job with both the mesh and the color texture, although the color texture does hide some of the flaws of the mesh itself. It was extremely quick to scan a face. Just be sure to take off glasses. It doesn't handle glasses well. The body scanning mode is designed for full body scans, including clothing and hair. I built a turntable for my subjects to stand on, but you'd have the same effect walking around your subject thanks to the wireless scanning. The body scan worked well with both the hair up in a bun and with the hair down. It took about a minute and a half to complete the scan, and even handled small movements of the subject. The color texture defects would be due to my turntable use. The lighting in my studio would cause the brightness to change as the turntable rotates. I always like looking at tattoos in the color texture. I'd say that the Otter Light did a great job with people scanning. Finally, let's scan some larger objects. The Otter Light easily scanned the front of my car, even without markers. I could tell the scanner had more difficulty with the chrome grille, but it was still able to capture it. It only started to struggle on the large flat area of the hood. There just wasn't enough unique geometry for it to pick up on. For flat panels, using the marker dots would definitely be the way to go. As for an interior scan, the Otter Light did an excellent job. It captured this inside door panel without any issues. Not everything is perfect with the Otter Light though. I've discussed a few issues so far, primarily the problems I ran into with mobile scanning on my Pixel 7. But I ran into a few other issues. Tethering the Otter Light with my computer via the USB cable was flaky. Windows did not seem to like the Otter Light connection. When you first launch Creality Scan, Creality warns about USB connection issues and prompts you to update to the latest firmware. Even after doing so, the Otter Light only recognized one of my four USB ports as being USB 3.0, thinking that the others were USB 2.0 speeds. And when using one port it thought was USB 3.0, the connection still wasn't stable. It would spontaneously disconnect and reconnect. I couldn't complete a scan using the USB cable, nor could I run through the calibration process which requires the USB connection. I did not run into this issue when I reviewed the original Otter. And to make sure it wasn't just this latest version of Creality Scan, I pulled out my original Otter and tested it. And the original Otter worked just fine. All four ports were correctly identified as USB 3.0 and I had no connection issues while scanning. 
so it's definitely a firmware or hardware issue with the Otter Lite specifically. So to wrap things up, Creality has taken the wildly successful Otter 3D scanner and trimmed it down to create the Otter Lite a scanner truly focused on wireless scanning. The results are really good for a hobbyist handheld scanner. I was really impressed by the results from both small and large objects. It captured both the geometry and textures, and the wireless nature made scanning a breeze. Creality's advertised scanning of objects between 20 and 2000 millimeters seems correct. It handled just as well with my smaller resin miniatures as it did with my large car scans. And the Otter Light handled black, metal, and reflective objects with ease. I didn't have to use any scanning sprays in order to scan those kinds of objects. Great work, Creality. However, there are a lot of caveats to those statements. When it worked. Mobile scanning was great when it worked. I know my Pixel 7 is right at the boundary of the recommended specs, so maybe if you have a more powerful phone, the experience would be better. Same with the tethered experience with my computer. When my computer correctly recognized the scanner, it was a great scanning experience, but when it would constantly disconnect, that experience became frustrating. Even with those difficulties, the wireless scanning using my laptop was an incredibly smooth experience. Not having to worry about cables and being free to move the scanner around was satisfying to use, so only one of the three scanning modes worked reliably for me. I hope that these are just teething issues with this brand new scanner, and that future firmware updates iron out these issues. The original Otter works great, so I know Creality has solved these issues in the past. I just hope that in a few months I can revisit this to see the Otter Lite living up to its potential. The Otter Lite is on sale for $699 US dollars at the time of recording. This makes it about $150 less expensive than the original Otter 3D scanner. At $699, that puts the Otter Lite in a perfect spot for hobbyists looking to get started with 3D scanning and I think that it's a great price point for this scanner. It's tough for me to give a full-hearted recommendation for the Otter Lite. I do really like this scanner. I think it's an incredible device at this price point. But knowing the issues I ran into with my computer and phone, I would not be surprised if others would run into these same issues. So if you are looking to get started with 3D scanning and want a wireless-focused device, then I could recommend the Otter Lite. Just check the return policy so that you can test on your own phone and computer and make sure that it all works for you before fully committing. So thank you all for watching my review of the Creality Otter Lite 3D scanner. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those. And if you are still in the market for a 3D scanner, check out my review of the original Otter 3D scanner. That'll give you a great point of comparison between the Otter and the Otter Lite. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.